was on this journey today, and it was a good one. And um, but I have all this stuff inside of me that I just want to give to everybody. But it's like I, 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 I. It's like it's just there. But okay, Lord, show me exactly what you want to do. And so obviously, I'm on the I'm on a wisdom journey. The first of the year, going through the book of Proverbs. And so this morning, it was super good. Uh, it was amazing. I, matter of fact, I, I got to go do some more. But one thing I learned about wisdom is there's a heavenly wisdom and there's an earthly wisdom. And so there's a demonic wisdom. And so when we, when we operate in the things of our flesh, we operate in man's wisdom. And the wisdom of God <coughs> is something that, that we need to be asking for. You know, and, and I believe it's in Ephesians where there's that prayer like, you know, God, I just ask for your wisdom and for revelation knowledge to know you. So wisdom and revelation knowledge to know him kind of come hand in hand. Why? Because he is wisdom. Amen. And so a lot of times we kind of go off our wisdom. We're kind of taught as we're growing up and as in our adult life and we get kind of like, prideful and we get educated and you know we want God to come down and answer to us and that's just not the way that it works and but I was thinking today I got all this stuff and and I'm like God just show me where where you want me to go because um I, I, okay we're gonna bounce around a little bit but I think you'll be okay um so we're gonna go we're gonna start out in Romans and we're going to start out in Romans 8, and we're going to go to verse 27. And all the Bibles are the same in here. You can open them up. Somebody will give me a page number. 1301 is the page number. So we're going to go to Romans 8, which is the chapter, and then we come down and find verse 27. And, of course, this is in the New King James Version. And so it says that, now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of Christ. Sorry. Knows the mind of the Spirit. Knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Let me start over. Now he who searches the hearts. I don't know where all that just all came from. Uh, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. So in right after when it says, now he, he is now capitalized. So he means now God. That God who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit, capital S, now it's God again, knows what the mind of the spirit is. Because he, God again, makes intercessions for the saints. And we are the saints. So he's searching our hearts. He's saying, yeah, Elsie looks this way on the outside, but I'm searching what's on the inside. I'm going after the spirit man that's in her, the motivation, what drives her. She might be able to fool people uh, by smiling and saying everything's okay, but I'm going to search her heart. And I'm going to know if everything's okay or not because God does that. Amen. And so he, the hearts, so he searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is so he knows what his mind is he knows what he wants to impute into you because we have the spirit of the living god inside of us and so if we can just be connected and learn him and and be intimate with him in relationship we're going to learn what the mind of the spirit is because he wants us to because he makes intercessions for us that's what god is doing According to the will of God. Okay, so I, I, I like this. So we know that all things work together for good. We quote this all the time. To those who love God. I'm a God lover. So anything that's going on in my life, somehow, some way, God is going to work everything together for good, even though I'm not liking the season I'm in. I'm not liking what just happened. I might not like my finances. I might not like that... I just lost somebody 
um, on earth that went to heaven. I, I may have went through a divorce. I might have lost a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I may have even lost a child. I don't know. I don't know what people's stuff is. But in all things, God is working everything together for his good. And it might not look good. And so, therefore, um, sometimes we react in our flesh versus we don't always act right, right? Like, I just don't pull out my Bible, and I just don't get on my knees and be like, okay, God, I know you got what. I might quote it in my mind, but it matters what's in my heart. I can quote scripture all day long, but if they're not living to me, they're just words, right? They're just words. And this is the living word of God. This is where God shows up by his spirit and breathes life into his word. Why? Because he is the word. Jesus is the word. So this is the thing, you know. I know there's lots of versions of the Bible out there, but you stay close to him. You stay close to the word of God. Don't go off. Like there are, there, I don't know what they call them. They're like, they're really like commentaries. Like people like to read the passion or the message and those are great, but they're not the same. I mean, like when I put passion next to King James, they're, they're a bit different. Like, Passion, I like the passion, makes me feel fuzzy and warm and, and maybe get a little bit understanding of something sometimes. But man, I really do get the power-packed word of God through my King, New King James Version Bible. I don't know why. It's just the one that the Lord has chosen for me to stay close to. But the other ones I venture out into a little bit, the Amplified and all of that. But I guess... You know, the Lord is spirit, and so his word is spirit. So he can give us such an understanding. That's why he gave Brian Simmons the ability to bring forth um, the Passion Translation for the people that need that type of word uh, of encouragement and understanding right now. But I'll tell you what. If you only got one page of the Bible and it's ripped out and that's all you got, God will give you the ability to receive the living word from that one page because it's him and it's his word. It's not Brian Simmons's word or the person who did the message or Joyce Myers's word. It's the word. Get it? I mean, are you picking up what I'm setting down? Okay, so it's not wrong to read these things. I'm just saying that he is spirit. He's in the word. And I sometimes give people different versions and say, hey, I think you should be reading this. It's going to be more simple for you, the NIV, the NLT, something like that. Um, and so I kind, of, I kind of go that way. But I really try to stay, you know, pretty close. And then sometimes I may say, hey, you know, this is in the Passion. And go read this once in the Passion. It will just light you up, you know. Because it's not too far deviated from what the word really is and means or the revelation of the word. So when we pray for, for wisdom and the revelation knowledge of who he is, it's all, part, it's all part of the word. It's all part of our walk and who we are. So when we're going through difficult times, even though it doesn't seem like God is there, he's there. He is there. He is with us. He loves us. He may be screaming in somebody's ears to get off your back and stop treating, mistreating you or abusing you. You know, but he's always there. His strength. His grace is there for you. His healing is there for you. His will is there for you. But in this particular scripture, it goes on to say that who are called according to his purpose. So this means the people that are called according to his purpose that will receive him. Because not everybody will receive him. People will be like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I don't believe in God. Yes, they do. Believe it or not, they do. Um, or they want to argue the fact. Uh, they do really do know that there's a God. How can you not? It's just that the intellect gets in the way. And so God is, is bigger than an intellect. He can save the person you think would never, ever be saved. He can change the person you think that never, ever could be changed. God can do it because nothing's too big for him. But right now he's speaking to us because we in this room, as far as I know, uh, are all called according to his purpose. Now listen. Listen. He says in verse 29, For whom he foreknew, me, he being God, also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. So now he's telling us 
the call according to his purpose is that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of God. That is what this is. That he purposed us, foreknew us, so that when we came in to the acknowledgement of the Lord, that now we can be conformed to his image. So it's not working out the things in your life to be according to what is good necessarily for you, as in your own mind, what you think is good for you, but it is according to you, your purpose is being the image of who God is. So we're being transformed into his image. That is his will. So even in the ups and downs, somebody put on Facebook <coughs> today, um, this is my plan, and it was a straight path to the flag. Yay, I've arrived. But on the other one underneath, he said, this is God's plan. And so it's straight. It's a pit. It's climbing up. And we're, we're good for a bit. Then we're down, and it's storming. And then we're up, and then we're down. And that is the path in our lives because what is happening is we're being transformed into the image of God. We learn to let go of our flesh, man. We learn to let go of our hurts and our trials and our pains. And we have to trust God because when you're in the valley pretty much you can't trust anybody else but God unfortunately I've seen a lot of valleys and I still see him today as a believer running after the heart of God but what the quest and the question is are you going to get over yourself Joyce and not demand me to do what you want me to do because you have not reached the character that I am trying to create in you you want more of me? You want to serve me more? Your character has to match that. And if your character behind closed doors or your character, you know, why you're home alone is not the character that you let people see, you're not really transformed into my image. Now, are you perfect? Absolutely not, because we are being transformed. But his will for us, he foreknew you, David, is for you to be transformed into his image so that now you can help the people that are in the pits of life understand you don't get out of there on your own. Christ is the only way. You don't get out of jail without Jesus. You don't get out of debt without Jesus. You're not even prosperous in any way, shape, or form truly without Jesus. Now, people in the world are, but there's scripture in the word that talks about the blessings of the Lord are without torment. But then there's blessings in the world that cost people their families, their life, their sanity. And they got these blessings, but they created them themselves. But it took their life. We want the blessings of the Lord. And that comes with transformation. When our characters are ready. I wasn't ready to be a pastor of 50 people 15 years ago. I was only able to pastor eight people. That was it. When I sat down and I, we got the church ready and I said, okay, God, Doors are open. Bring them in. We're ready. Oh, praise God, he didn't. <laughs> because I would have been, I would have broke. I wouldn't have been able to handle the pressures of people. I wouldn't be able to handle people's uh, um, looks at me and their expectations of me and the gnarlies at me sometimes. And even the praises of God that they see working through me. I would not have been able to handle those things. I would have broke. So if you haven't arrived yet, it's God's will. Because we're still being transformed. But we're being transformed into his image. Do you know that Jesus himself had to get favor with God and man? Jesus, who was perfect. Well, that's what he's doing in our lives. He gives us favor with man. He opens doors that no, no other person could open you certainly couldn't open it I couldn't open it not anything that we could maintain and levels that we can maintain but God can do it so one of the biggest things that the Lord is saying is that hey listen I foreknew you 
And I predestined you to be conformed into my image, into the image of my son. So you will know him if you walk with him in relationship. You will know him as you read the word and you learn about him in the New Testament. You will know him even in the Old Testament, but it's kind of hard uh, when you don't understand the things of God yet to go in the Old Testament and see that God is in the Old Testament too and what he's doing in all these different places. But in the New Testament, you get to walk with Jesus to the Gospels and you get to see his character. You get to see how he is. And yes, he called the people that nobody else would call. I'm one of them. But even in that, it's a hard thing to understand if you're walking in the wisdom of the world. Because you see, to get a job, you have to have a pretty good resume. To be accepted in a job, you've got to have a pretty good resume. And you've got to have a pretty good uh, poker face and happy face and great personality when you walk through the door and you get hired. You did all that. With God, it doesn't work that way because he's searching the heart. He knows the mind. He knows who you are. So you can't come in and give a resume about what a great Christian you are and how you could, you've read the Bible 16 times in your life and you've been doing Proverbs for a decade. Ain't going to work because you can be doing all those things and without your heart being transformed and you start transforming into the image of God, you're still the same. It's just that you took the wisdom of the world and you put it in, into Christ and it became religion to you. It became works to you. So you're trying to earn your salvation. You're trying to earn a good place with God. And what does God do? He confounds the wise of the world. He takes the foolish things of the world. And he, and he messes up the wise because he turns it upside down because heaven is upside down. So he picks people like me who, doesn't, who, don't, who don't have credentials, who, who doesn't um, fit the criteria of what I thought a pastor was supposed to be. He took 12 disciples to start such a movement of God. It's never stopped. People that were sinners and liars and manipulative people. But what did they get? They became transformed into the image of God. Were they perfect? Absolutely not. When Jesus said to Peter, when Peter tried to rebuke Jesus, hello, don't be rebuking your leadership. That is not a good thing to do. And Jesus, I mean, just here you go. Satan, get behind me. He didn't say, Peter, you're so full of Satan in the name of Jesus, my name. I cast him out of you. He said, get behind me. He was coming against Jesus. Peter was just somebody used. But he wasn't in Peter. He was on Peter. He worked through the flesh of Peter. Peter's pride in his big mouth. That's what, that's what Satan did. He took advantage of somebody who wasn't quite matured yet. But the same man at Pentecost came out and brought forth the message by the spirit of the living God who brought thousands into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> so you know the things that God does are upside down. We got healing rooms coming up. My prayer is that the flesh stays home where it belongs, that you follow your leader and not be used to Satan to bring division into a very awesome ministry. One that God is building, one that God is going to have increase here, but we still are people and there's some flesh that has to die. And that's why we haven't came to the capacity yet because our character in healing rooms don't match what God wants to do yet. And the only way that's going to happen is if we die to our flesh and stop being wise in our own eyes, stop leaning to our own understanding, stop being disgruntled and, and agreeing with offense. Offense is from the devil. He is a demonic spirit. The word talks about it, that that's the greatest move of Satan is offense. He's in every church trying to bring offense on people. That's why we talk about forgiveness. That's why we talk about not being judgmental and critical. Because I'm telling you what, if it does something like, it's flesh. 
It's flesh. When you truly care about somebody and you have compassion and love toward them and you want to help them, God will move in that. But if you just want to be like, I didn't like what you did, Marcy. And go off and live your life, that's not good. You know, one thing I was taught when I was first a pastor, because there's a few people that were really trying to form me. Like, I'm gonna, you don't know what it's like. You don't know how to be a Christian, so I'm going to help you be a Christian. And, and so what God did is he started putting these things. I didn't know what he was doing. I, I learned later that God didn't want somebody to teach me how to be a Christian or be a pastor. God wanted me to be transformed into his image to learn how to focus on him. Now, listen, we need each other for that. Don't be a lone ranger. You're not supposed to be. But sometimes, like my life, I was super influenced by people, and I would do anything to please people because of my own insecurities, my wounds, and my trauma. And so even coming into Christ, I still had all that yuck. But God said, I purposed you. I knew you from the beginning. And I see your heart. I see your heart. And I am going to transform you into my image at his pace. And that's what he does. And so some people might be super humble and super easy to work with. And they're just like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then others are like, I've been a Christian for a long time. Or I know this or I know that. Just lay it down. Just lay it down. Let God be first. Just... So in the beginning, um, Joe Tapoya, who's now home with the Lord, I remember him so well, and God started using him as a mentor for me for a while, and, and he told me, and he told others, he said, listen, if you think Pastor Joyce is doing something wrong, you need to take it to God, you don't take it to her, you take it to God, because there's a good possibility it's you and your flesh and what you're doing, and you're just wanting to help her, kind of but you're wanting to control her and have her do what you want her to do. And so that really taught us, including me, because I've been at conferences, I've been around Pastor Rick, I've been on the field with Pastor Rick, he is my pastor, I submit to him, I don't tell him what to do, I don't tell him if I disapprove, but if I see something, I take it to God. I still serve him, I don't stop serving him because uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything that he does, I still serve him because I'm called to serve him. And the rest of it, I just give over to God. And so that's what he calls us to do because that's what Jesus had to do. He had to give it over to his father because he had, he had some stuff. I, I love that. I, I, like, I like the passion and, um, um, or chosen, sorry. And so I just watched the episode in three where they were going to kill him because of how he spoke in the synagogue. So they, he let him, he just let him take him right on out there to the edge of the cliff, and he's standing there, and they all back up, and here's Jesus standing there, and these two friends of his, now this is, this is in the movie, so you got to understand, there's lots of truth, and God is doing great things in this, in this thing, but I love it because it just showed me the so power of God, and so here's this, this Pharisee, this learned religious man saying, what are you waiting for? The law of Moses said to kill him. That's not how he said it. He goes like, and Jesus steps forward. And he looks at him. He said, it ain't happening today. And he walks right through the crowd. Right through the crowd. Jesus' timing is everything. So our timing in him is everything. So when he says to us, that he knows what he's doing and that he's going to work everything out for our good. He is doing that. But it's not according to our good. <laughs> Ours in there, but it ain't us. He's working it out so that we are transformed into his image because that is the best thing for us. That is the best thing for the church. That is the best thing for our families and our marriages and our friendships. The best thing for the world. So this is a great scripture. Yep, we're loved by God. According, we're gonna, all things are going to work together for good. 
<laughs> to those that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose and his purpose, first purpose, after we love him and love each other, but his first purpose, and you can't love each other until we've been transformed into his image because we want things our way, on our time, the only way. And so we say to God, I want it my way. And God says, you're not going to have it your way. You're not going to like the next week of your life because I already see it and I see where you're going to fall. I see where you're going to cry out, but you're still not ready even when you're crying out. You're only crying out out of emotion. You're not really crying out of desire. You're crying out in order to get what you want so you feel better. But if you'll just allow me to transform you, you will feel better. You will have peace, you will have joy, you will have kindness, you will have love, you will have self-control, you will have everything that you need because I am in you and you are in me and we are in the Father. Amen. And I'm interceding for you right now because the trials of life that are there to help transform you. Well, why does God let this happen? I tell people. We live in a fallen world and things happen. It is a dark world. It's only getting darker. It says that the darkness will cover the face of the earth. But guess what? We win. But even in that, you have to understand that God gets the blame for all. But can I tell you he's there to pull us out, to help us? He's not there forsaking us, saying, you deserve this. Yes, there's consequences to our decisions. If you're going to get drunk, good and drunk, you're probably going to do something really stupid many times. You might drive with your kids in the car. You could get in an accident, never meant to, but that decision could cost you your child's life or your best friend's life or your life prematurely because the devil comes to kill steal and destroy you know so there's decisions that we really have to grab a hold of when you're gossiping and you're hurting people in your own church you're being used by satan to bring division you're not being transformed into the image of god you're being transformed into the image of a devil we got to think about these things so I'm going to just challenge some of you, because I'm not going to go there tonight, because I know you all are done and I'm hot. <laughs> if you go read James chapter 3, it talks about heavenly versus demonic wisdom. You're going to find in here where it talks. So see, people are like, yeah, I'm wise. This is why, this is why God takes the wise of the world and makes them foolish with the foolish of the world because we're considered the foolish because we walk in the wisdom of God if we're being transformed but the wise of the world are different they're seeking different things and it talks about the wisdom of the world and it does not yield a good fruit so you don't want the wisdom of the world you want the wisdom of the Lord and if you go and you read Proverbs every day You'll see that it's always talking about the righteous and the wicked, the righteous and the ungodly. And there are some amazing jewels and tools in there that will encourage you. And it will come back to you as you walk out your life that you are going to walk in the wisdom of God instead of walking in the wisdom of man. The wisdom that your flesh wants to live in that's full of pride and full of me. It's not always cool in the world to be humble, but they, even in the world, you being so insubordinate, you're losing your job if you're not union. You know, sometimes we just have to take a knee and ask the Lord to make us humble. Because if we pout and we act like little kids and we're pulling on things that are ungodly, even in our churches, it's your flesh that's acting out. When God is saying, my will for you, my perfect, my foreseen, my foreseen future for you is to be made into my image. You don't see me going off and pouting when people are wanting to kill me. 
when they're not letting me have my way, even my father told me to shake the dust off my feet and leave. Sometimes the spirit of the living God wouldn't let the disciples go in and minister. You just go away. You don't cause a scene. You don't, you don't, you don't make a, a big deal. Like people that leave churches and they cut down their pastors and the people. I remember one time, and I, Stan and Lori heard this about this church. You know, they, the people had left here and they went around and said that we, that, that we were a cult. Now we're talking like 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, that you don't go to that church, it's a cult. Pastor Joyce is, you know, whatever. I'm none of those things. I knew it. I heard it from other pastors and churches, you know, and I, did, I just, I was too, too young in the Lord to even care about it. Uh, but I'm glad that the people, that, the people that were, maybe it kept away the ones that weren't, weren't supposed to come here. But the ones that heard it and came anyways, they're okay. They're okay, right? And so because God, God has his way, but, you know, when you leave churches, you leave quietly. You know, you, you, don't, you don't stir up. You let God take care of his churches because uh, he knows how to take care of people. But I really want to encourage you today that, that God's plan for you is good, but his plan is for you to be transformed into his image, which is good. And then all these other things, you'll start seeking the kingdom of heaven, and all the other things will be added unto you. And we are going to talk about the kingdom of heaven. That is a message that God put in my heart down in Florida. And I, I just have to, I have to spend more time with the Lord on this because, as you know, I, have, I don't have a clue. So I have to really seek God on it um, because I know it's for our church now. He says you're saved, you're, you, you know, you're being transformed, but, you know, what about seeking after me, but then my kingdom, you know, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. That doesn't mean that we shut the door on everything else, but what it does is it transforms your heart and the way that you think and how you walk in relationship with him. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. So, Father, I thank you and praise you. You're so good. Thank you for what you've done. I ask, Lord, that you touch each person right how you wanted to today. And, and I hear this today, and I'm just going to say it. The Lord says, is, if you're hearing my voice tonight, and you just really want to take a step of faith and say, I... I really want to be transformed in his image, and I don't know what that's going to look like. I, I just am always trying, you know, but I just need to allow him to transform me through my trials and tribulations and even through my victories. Then I'm going to invite you to come forward tonight, and will you move this for me, please, Dan? And so, because I really want to see... God do a work not only in my heart, but your heart. And I want to reach the character. God spoke to me about my character. You know, somebody came and sat down next to me on Sunday and said, Pastor Joyce, I don't know why this house is not full. It should be. That message that you spoke, I could listen to it over and over again. Obviously, I didn't speak it. I'm yielding to the Lord. It's him. And, of course, on Sundays we have more people here. And God said, your character is not ready yet, but it could be if you'll stop this, if you'll stop this, and you'll stop this. They're not things that hurt any of y'all, but there's things he's asking me for that not necessarily are wrong, but he wants them. Doesn't want me to do it anymore. Wants me to do something else. I'm being transformed. And I want to get to the next plateau of character change so God can bring in the next people because we live in a very hurt community that needs the love of Jesus. But it's not just my character that needs to be changed. It's everybody's. So I'm asking you tonight, and Tim, we're going to close with, um, you have to go to pre-service and then in that set, down at the bottom, right at the bottom, and you click on the set, there's like this purple and red song. I think it's called He, He, Yes, or Yes, or He Something. It's kind of purple. 
and pink. Yes, he does. Yes, he will. Something like that. Yeah. It might even be at the bottom if you type it in. Um, or yes, he will. <laughs> I don't know. It's yes. It's yes, everybody. So, because um, God, do God does it. So what I'm going to ask uh, you guys to do um, right now as I'm standing up here, if, if you want to join me with just allowing the Lord to get us to the character that we need to be, if if you're ready and you want to, even though you don't understand it all, you want to be transformed, I want you to come forward and stand with me today. And because God wants to do this in our lives, and he loves us, and he'll take us all at different levels because, because we're all at different levels. And, and so thank you that, that you want this, because I want this too. I'm standing here with you because I'm tired of doing the old humdrum i'm tired of of just living and and so what we're doing today and anybody out there listening if this is you just just let god be god in your life and let him transform you into his image because that is that is why we are born and as we are transformed into his image you're going to touch many people because he foreseen you and he chose you and he wants you and he loves you and he's proud of you and not one of us looks the same standing up here and not one of us looks the same out there but every one of us are called by God to do his will but we're all not ready because we're in character change <laughs> I'm one of them Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to pray, and then we'll close Tim and start that song. So, Lord, first of all, I just I pray over each person that just came up and those that were afraid to come up that didn't come up and those that are watching. Lord, we just surrender our lives to you. We stand in agreement. We take a stand publicly for you because, God, we want the more. We want you to um, use us. We, we want you to... We don't understand exactly how to be transformed on our own. So we understand we have to go through the things we have to go through. So, Lord, we say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. We will allow you to do what only you can do to get us where we belong because you've foreseen us. And now, Lord, you want to transform us. And, God, you want to transform us. Your, your whole purpose is for us to be transformed into the image of God so that we can hear you, walk with you, be the light of the world. Amen. And for the salt of the earth. We can't do that in the flesh, God. So we just give you flesh. And we ask, Lord, that you just continue to produce in and through us in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, you guys.